There's lots of ways to be as a person. And some people express their deep appreciation in, in, in different ways. But one of the ways that I believe people express their appreciation to, to the rest of humanity is to make something wonderful and put it out there. And you never, you never meet the people, you never shake their hands, you never hear their story or tell yours, but somehow in the act of making something with a great deal of care and love, something's transmitted there. And it's a way of expressing to the rest of our species our deep appreciation. So we need to be true to who we are and remember what's really important to us. That's what's going to keep Apple Apple, is if we keep us us. Thank you. I love hearing his voice and his inspiring message. And it was only fitting that Steve should open his theater. Thank you. It is the honor of a lifetime to be the first to welcome you to the Steve Jobs Theater. Steve meant so much to me and so much to all of us. There's not a day that goes by that we don't think about him. Memories have especially come rushing back as we prepared for today and this event. It's taken some time, but we can now reflect on him with joy instead of sadness. Steve's spirit and timeless philosophy on life will always be the DNA of Apple. His greatest gift his greatest expression of his appreciation for humanity would not be a singular product, but rather it would be Apple itself. We dedicate this theater to Steve because we loved him and because he loved days like this, where he could share our latest new products and new ideas with the world. And we do so not only to pay tribute to Steve, but to inspire the next generation of creators and innovators. Steve was a genius, and one of the many ways that he showed that was in the, his uncanny ability to unlock the talent of everybody that he worked with. He thought deeply about our workplace and its surroundings, and he believed that they should inspire talented people to do their best work. So over a decade ago, he began to work on a new campus for Apple. His vision for Apple Park was to create an incredible workplace of the future where engineers and designers could all be together collaborating on the next generations of Apple products to change the world. Steve's vision and passion live on here at Apple Park and everywhere in Apple. Today and always, 
We honor him. Thank you. We're here today to talk about some incredible product. But before we get to that, I'd like to take a moment to talk about what's happening in Florida and Texas, southeastern United States, and across the Caribbean. Our hearts go out to all of the people whose lives have been disrupted by Hurricanes Irma and Hurricane Harvey. You're in our thoughts. We send you our strength. You are in our prayers. Apple is working closely with relief and recovery efforts through Hand in Hand and the American Red Cross. And in addition to Apple's direct contributions, we're making it really simple for the entire Apple community to donate via iTunes and the App Store. The Hand in Hand benefit for hurricane relief airs tonight on all of the major broadcast networks. And I, I encourage you to watch it. And however you choose to give, I hope that you open your heart to this important effort. Thank you. Now, let me tell you a little bit about our new home. We'll start moving in Apple Park later this year. But of course, such a large move is really more of a process. And the first big step is the opening today of the Steve Jobs Theater. It's the most state-of-the-art, purpose-built theater ever built for events just like this one. Apple Park has been built to reflect Apple's values for both technology and the environment. It connects connects extraordinarily advanced buildings with a rolling parkland to form an open and inspiring environment for our teams to create and collaborate. The park itself was converted from a sea of asphalt into a 175-acre green space with over 9,000 trees. Apple Park is designed to be seamless with nature. It's open, transparent. It brings the outside in and connects everyone to the beautiful California landscape. It's powered by 100% renewable energy. Thank you. And in fact, we have one of the world's largest on-site solar installations right here. And just like everything we make, Apple Park is, has been designed with extraordinary attention to detail, incredible precision, and really beautiful materials. We've got a great visitor center, which will be open later this year, where we will welcome everyone. And inside the visitor center, you'll find an incredible augmented reality experience where you can learn more about Apple Park, its design, and its innovations. You'll also find a fantastic new Apple retail store. As you know, Apple retail has always been about more than selling. It's about learning, inspiring, and connecting with people. Now, our stores are also the best place to go discover, explore, and experience our new products. So before we get to some incredible products, we'd like to give you an update on retail. And to do that, I'd like to invite Angela up. Angela? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. And I love the fact that the same team that designs Apple Park also designs our largest retail stores around the world. But it's funny, we actually don't call them stores anymore. 
We call them town squares because they're gathering places for 500 million people who visit us every year. Places where everyone's welcome and where all of Apple comes together. But what really brings it all to life, as Tim said, are our incredible teams. We've always said that our people are our soul. And they're Apple's greatest differentiator because they bring personal connection to communities all over the world. They humanize technology. But along with our amazing teams, our commitment to design also sets us apart. To make things simple, beautiful. And that's why we think of Apple retail as Apple's largest products. And like all of our products, we've designed new features to take the customer experience even further. In our largest cities where we can, we create a plaza, a space open to everyone. Come in and relax, meet up with friends, or just listen to a local artist on the weekends. Inside, we've designed a forum, a place for customers to come and create, collaborate, or just connect again with one another. For local entrepreneurs and app developers, we have a quieter space in the larger stores called a boardroom where they can learn more from our teams or again, share with each other. And the Genius Grove, a redesigned, more relaxed service experience now in the heart of our largest stores. And lastly, the avenues. Kind of like shop windows around a town square. They're carefully curated and they change seasonally to always feature our newest products and services. And this summer, to turn on these new features, we've launched Today at Apple, our in-store experience designed to inspire customers to go even further with their passions. We started with things that are core to Apple's DNA, things people most use their devices for, and they trust us to teach them, like photography, music, gaming and app development. We've created new programs like photo walks where customers can perfect their photography skills with features like portrait mode and memories. And we do all of this in a really fun social way by taking them out to the neighborhood to explore with each other. Or Swift Playgrounds where the next generation app developers can begin to learn the basics of coding. And one of my personal favorites, Teachers Tuesdays where our teams help local educators stay updated on the newest technologies and apps. In some of our larger stores, sessions are led by local artists, like this music lab called The Art of Beat Making with RZA and the Rolly team in Brooklyn. These sessions in all stores are led by our creative team and a new position we call a creative pro. So the creative pro is now to liberal arts, as the genius has always been to technology. And I would love to show a quick video to show you how Today at Apple is coming to life. Welcome to Today at Apple. Today at Apple, we're going to be learning about coding. Today at Apple, we're going to be talking with a very talented illustrator. Today at Apple, we're learning about photography. You have tons of good ideas in your head, so it's like, oh, I like that. I'm going to explore that some more. When you do something for the first time, you have to be completely fearless. <laughs> We've just started. <laughs> We've just started, but the feedback has been fantastic. Customers are telling us they love the role that Apple Retail is playing in their community. So what's next? Well, we're going to continue to open Apple Town Squares in the top cities around the world. We're going to invest in online, and we're also going to continue to reinvest in our 400 classic locations, including Apple Fifth Avenue in New York City, where we're opening up the plaza to allow natural sunlight to come in into a greatly expanded space below. And you can see the glass cube will return when reopen late next year. <laughs> 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 
And in Paris, we're restoring an entire historic building on the iconic Champs-Elysees. We're turning a five-story atrium into our largest forum. Early next year, we're transforming a theater beneath Piazza Liberty into a modern day town square for Milan. Just imagine movie night there next summer. And we've recently announced an ambitious project to restore Carnegie Library in the heart of our nation's capital. We can't think of a better place for today at Apple programs than a building originally created for the city to access knowledge and unlock their potential. And I'm thrilled to personally announce the opening of our newest flagship store in the heart of the Midwest, Apple Michigan Avenue in Chicago on October 20th. Our team has designed a spectacular pavilion that seamlessly connects the plaza to the promenade as a part of the city's plan to transform the Chicago Riverfront. So that's a brief highlight of just a couple of things we've been working on. And as Tim said, Apple's retail purpose has always been to enrich lives. So a huge thank you to the 65,000 Apple retail employees around the world whose passion, energy, and commitment in serving all of us every day and ensuring all of Apple comes together. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. I am really excited. I'm really excited about all the incredible things going on in retail but I am especially proud of our unbelievable retail team. It's the best place to go experience our new products. And so let's get going on telling you about what we're gonna launch today, beginning with Apple Watch. Apple Watch was designed to help people stay active, motivated, and connected so that they could live a better day. And I'm happy to tell you that more people are doing that than ever before. Since the launch of the Series 2, the Apple Watch has experienced phenomenal growth. In fact, last quarter, Apple Watch grew over 50% compared to the previous year. This is incredible. Now, Last year, we told you that the Apple Watch had already become the number two watch in the world. Today, I'm thrilled to tell you the Apple Watch is now the number one watch in the world. But, but what's most rewarding to us is how much our users love it. Our, we have an industry-leading customer satisfaction rate of 97%. This is blow away. Now, people write to us all the time and tell us how the Apple Watch is helping them lead a healthier life. These stories are unbelievable, and we prepared a video so that you could hear directly from them what they're telling us. I'd love to play it for you. Querida Apple. Привет, Apple. Dear Tim. Apple Hello, Mr. Cook. I know you may never read this, but I just wanted to put it out there. I live in Massachusetts. I'm a country boy from small town Mississippi. I'm a two-time Olympian. It was filmed by Ladino. I'm the father of a nine-year-old. I am a 99-year-old world traveler. Every day for the last two and a half years, I have worn this tiny computer on my wrist. This is the first time I've worn a watch since my bar mitzvah. I was a scrawny, sports-hating kid who never really liked being active. I was coming back from a knee surgery. While I was never fat, I was 
was the proud owner of a dad bod. I fell into a deep depression and weighed 250 pounds. Now I get up at 5 a.m. If it's five minutes to midnight, I'll do push-ups in my bedroom. I'll take the dog out for a really quick walk around the block. I walk around the house, and my family thinks I'm a little crazy. I dutifully oblige when the Apple Watch reminds me to stand up every hour. I ran my first Spartan race in December and ran a full marathon in February. Agora eu consigo enxergar em como meu corpo está respondendo a múltiplos ensaios. Dear Mr. Cook, our daughter was recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. My car rolled over three times and my phone landed far out of my reach. Once I collected my thoughts, I remembered my Apple Watch had the SOS feature. After being rushed to the emergency room, I was diagnosed with a condition that was causing my liver, kidneys, and heart to start shutting down. The integration of her glucose monitor with the Apple Watch lets us make sure her blood sugars don't go to dangerously low levels. For six minutes, I hung there in my car, talking to a dispatcher until help arrived. Had I not been wearing my Apple Watch, I never would have sought medical attention, which in turn saved my life. Sincerely, Paul. Thank you so much for creating something that does not make me feel old. Thanks for listening. Avi, sincerely, Stuart. All the best, Tara. Sincerely, Avi. Jill. Casey. With благодарность, Yub, Dmitri. Muito obrigado, Jovan. Those stories are so moving, and there's really no words to describe what it feels like to receive these notes. I'd like to thank everybody in the video for sharing their personal experience with all of us. Now, we have some great news about the future of Apple Watch, and to share it with you, I'd like to invite Jeff up. Jeff? Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Those stories are really great. And it's, it's really inspiring to us that so many people are getting healthier with Apple Watch. And with WatchOS 4, they're going to be able to do even more. We're adding smart activity coaching, which is going to help more people close more rings more often. A completely redesigned workout app with high intensity interval training. New features for swimmers, like auto sets and gym kit, an industry first. It's really simple. You just tap your watch on a machine, get going, and all your metrics are in sync. One of the things that enables these fitness features is the Apple heart rate sensor. And it's been at the core of Apple Watch since the very beginning. And today, it's the most used heart rate monitor in the world. And we want to use it to help even more people. So we're doing three things. First. We're making enhancements to the heart rate app to give you more information. Now, you'll see your heart rate right on the watch face so you can keep an eye on it with just a raise of the wrist. And when you launch the heart rate app, you'll see new measurements like resting heart rate. Apple Watch calculates this daily by correlating background heart rate readings with accelerometer data. And recovery heart rate, which tells you how quickly your heart rate drops after workout. A lower resting heart rate and a quicker recovery rate can be signs of improved fitness. And now, you can keep a better picture of your heart rate. You'll have a better picture throughout the day. The second thing we're doing is inspired by many of the letters we receive from customers who notice an unusually high heart rate when they wouldn't expect one. So Apple Watch has been helpful for them, but we realize most people won't notice. So we're adding a feature. And now, Apple Watch will notify you when it detects an elevated heart rate you, and you don't appear to be active. <laughs> and the third thing we're doing is focused on heart rhythm. A regular heart rhythm has a familiar pattern, but when your heart beats irregularly, it's called an arrhythmia. It doesn't mean it's beating too fast or too slow. It just means it's beating out of its normal rhythm. 
and that can cause problems. The most common form of serious arrhythmia is called atrial fibrillation, or AFib, and it affects tens of millions of people and is a leading cause of stroke. But the challenge is many people with AFib don't feel symptoms, so it often goes undiagnosed. We've been looking at this for a couple of years, and we think Apple Watch can help. In our initial studies, Apple Watch has been effective at surfacing irregular rhythms. So we're expanding that work, and today we're announcing the Apple Heart Study. It will use data from Apple Watch, and it will analyze arrhythmias, including AFib, and notify users. This study is being conducted in partnership with Stanford Medicine, and we're working closely with the FDA, and they've been great to work with. So later this year, the first phase of the Apple Heart Study will be available in the US on the App Store. Those are the updates focused on fitness and health, and they join the other great features of watchOS 4. We have a completely redesigned music experience, uh, an, an intelligent Siri face, fun new characters from Toy Story, and more. So that's watchOS 4. It will be available to all Apple Watch customers on September 19th. And now I'd like to introduce the next generation of Apple Watch. Introducing Apple Watch Series 3, and it has cellular built in. <laughs> now you have the freedom to go anywhere with just your Apple Watch. This, this has been our vision from the very beginning, and we believe built-in cellular makes Series 3 the ultimate expression of Apple Watch. Now you can go for a run with just your watch, and still be connected. You can leave your phone when you go to the beach or just run a quick errand. And it's really nice to know you can be reached if needed while staying in the moment. You can receive an important call with just your watch and, and the number is the same number as your iPhone. You don't have to manage a separate number. The apps you rely on like messages just work and Siri's at your beck and call anytime, anywhere. You can use maps and get directions and the location for Find My Friend automatically switches to your watch when you're away from your phone. And third-party apps like WeChat work over cellular as well. And coming next month, cellular is going to change the way we listen to music. Because with Apple Watch Series 3 and Apple Music, you can stream 40 million songs on your wrist. You'll have access to all your favorite music. You can listen to Beats One Live or any Apple Radio music station. You can even ask Siri to find you the perfect track. Now, the best device for staying, motive, uh, for staying active has all the music you need to stay motivated. What? To enable these features on Apple Watch, we have packed Series 3 with the most advanced technologies ever in a watch. Inside is a new dual core processor delivering up to 70% more, more performance. It's really, really fast. Siri is quicker than ever, and thanks to the new processor, for the first time on Apple Watch, Siri can talk. It's 64 degrees right now in South Lake Tahoe. 
it's, it's, actually, it's really convenient to, to not have to look at the screen when you ask it a question. For Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, we developed a custom wireless chip we call W2. There's nothing else like it. It delivers up to 85% faster Wi-Fi while being 50% more power, power efficient for both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And we've added a barometric altimeter. So now you get flights of stairs climbed and elevation gains after a workout. We're also releasing an app for developers that's going to be great for skiing and snowboarding apps. Of course, <laughs> got a snowboarder out there. Of course, the biggest challenge of all was adding cellular. You see, our little watch is already packed. And you have to add antennas, radios, power amplifiers, a SIM card. And if you don't do it right, it gets so big, it looks like a house arrest bracelet and you're not going to want to wear it. <laughs> so our engineers have been hard at work, and they've come up with some really creative solutions. For example, rather than add an antenna, the display itself is the multi-frequency antenna for both LTE and UMTS. And of course, you have to have a SIM card, but even a nano SIM would be way too big. So instead, we integrated an electronic SIM and it's a fraction of the size. So here's where we ended up. Even with all these new features, faster dual core processor, W2, altimeter, all the stuff you've got to put in for cellular, the case for Series 3 is the same size as Series 2. The only difference is we extended the back crystal a mere 0.25 millimeters. That's as thin as two sheets of paper. It's, it's really magical to make a standalone call on a device this small. And I'd like to do that for you right now. I'm going to switch watches so you guys can uh, see what's going on. Uh, this watch is connected over the AT&T cellular network. This is our new Explorer face. And I'm going to tap on the, uh, the phone app. And I'm going to call Deidre, who's a colleague on the watch team. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Deidre. Hey, I'm calling you from the new Steve Jobs Theater. How are you doing? I'm a little sad to be missing the keynote, but I'm working very hard out here. Oh, yeah, sure, sure you are. Why don't we pull in some video and show everybody where you are? <laughs> this has been a very tough assignment, but you know me. I'm a team player. Yeah, that's you, Deidre. Give, give, give. Well, it looks beautiful out there. It is amazing, but I'm just trying not to fall off this board in front of a million people. <laughs> Well, so, so, far, so, so far, so good, Deidre. Hey, uh, I, I should probably cut it off before something goes awry, but uh, be safe out there, and thanks for doing this. My pleasure. I may stay here a few more days. Yeah, OK. OK, that sounds great, Deidre. I'm going to go rogue for a minute. I, you know, you guys, you guys get it, but sometimes people take technology for granted. And just, just for perspective, I'm mic'd. And in fact, I'm actually double mic'd in just the right location so you can hear me. Deidre's out in the middle of a windy lake, and the only microphone on Deidre is the little tiny one on the Apple Watch. It's a foot or two away from her mouth. She's paddling, and the signal's being sent over cellular coming in. And that's just darn close to magic. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Series 3 comes in a wide variety of cases and bands. We have a beautiful new gold aluminum finish, along with silver and space gray. 
And we're excited to introduce a new band we call the Sport Loop. It's designed for an active lifestyle, and it's light, stretchy, and breathable. For Apple Watch Nike Plus, we have exclusive new colors, and they're releasing a new version of their Nike Plus Run Club app with great new features like in-run audio coaching. And we have some wonderful colors across all of our bands that you just have to see in person. We have a great partnership with Hermes, and the tradition continues this year with some new watch face styles, some beautiful new bands, like the one on the left that's inspired by the classic Hermes driving glove. And last year, we introduced a white ceramic watch. This year, we're adding a ceramic watch in a gorgeous gray finish. All of these watches were built with a great deal of care as well as a concern for the environment, and they're free of these harmful materials. So that's Apple Watch Series 3, cellular, GPS, swim proof, 70% faster dual core processor, uh, barometric altimeter, all the features of Watch OS 4, and it still has all day battery life up to 18 hours across a mix of LTE, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. We have two versions of Series 3. There's one with cellular at $399 and a version without cellular that has all the other great features at just $329. And we're going to keep Series 1 in the line at a new starting price of Series 3 cellular will be available in these nine countries with these 14 carriers at launch and six more coming later in the year. And we've worked with each of these carriers and they each off have a special introductory offer for Series 3, so it's going to be great. And we, we are offering the, the Series 3 without cellular in these 26 countries at launch. Orders will begin September 15th and availability will be September 22nd. That's the update on Apple Watch, and now back to Tim. Apple Watch. Apple Watch is the ultimate device for healthy life, and the Series 3 takes that to a whole new level. Now, Jeff showed you some very cool things you can do with the cellular function in the Series 3. And one of those is to stream 40 million songs right on your wrist. We've made a great ad showing just that. I'd love to play it for you. This is a big moment for Apple Watch, and we think you are going to love it. Next up, I'd like to turn your attention to Apple TV. Apple TV has changed the way we experience television, simplifying the way that we discover and enjoy movies, TV shows, sports, news, games, apps, and, and so much more. In fact, We've just been awarded our second Emmy for Apple TV. Thank you. This Emmy was in recognition for how Siri makes it so easy to search, discover, and interact with your TV content. 
we're really, we're really proud of the efforts we've made to improve the TV experience. Now, throughout the history of TV, there's been a few key inflection points that have changed the way we experience television. It, of course, all began with black and white, and it was first transformed with the introduction of color. It took a huge step forward with the advent of HD. Each stage brought with it a more true-to-life experience, a more immersive experience. Now, we're at the next major inflection point, one that has the most stunning visuals ever, that are ideal for the large TV screens that are coming into our living rooms. This will bring cinematic quality to virtually everything that you watch. That's why I am so excited to introduce Apple TV 4K. At the heart of Apple TV 4K are two key technologies that are driving this next evolution of the TV experience. And to tell you all about them, I'd like to invite Eddie to the stage. Eddie? Thank you, Tim. It is really great to be here tonight. Um, Apple TV 4K is incredible. And it starts with two big advancements in picture quality. First is 4K. Let me show you. This is an image in 4K. It's got incredible detail. That's possible because 4K has four times the number of pixels as HD. But resolution isn't everything. There's an even bigger advancement that's more important, and it's called high dynamic range, or HDR. While 4K is about the number of pixels, HDR is about better pixels. Let me show you. Here's that same 4K image, and here it is in HDR. Look at the color, the details. Apple TV can do this because it supports the industry standard HDR10, as well as Dolby Vision, the best HDR experience. Now, Apple TV 4K with HDR delivers the highest picture quality ever. And to show you, we've installed a state-of-the-art Dolby 4K HDR cinema projector in the theater. So let's dim the lights, and let me show you the new Apple TV. Now, we've remastered our screensavers. Our customers love these to take full advantage of 4K HDR. Here we are in Dubai, and even at night, you can see incredible details in the buildings and the cars on the road. Now, here's a city shot that really shows off the crispness and sharpness that's possible in the new Apple TV. Now, we've redone the whole Apple TV UI in 4K. The text is sharper, the images are brighter and more vibrant. But let's take a look at a 4K HDR clip. This is from the new Spider-Man movie coming to iTunes later this month. Yo, this high-tech stuff makes it too easy. Told you it was worth it. Okay, go, go, go. Oh, nice. We can hit like five more places tonight. <clears throat> What's up, guys? You forgot your pin number? Whoa, you're the Avengers. What are you guys doing here? <clears throat> Thor, <clears throat> Hulk, good to finally meet you guys. <clears throat> Why oh, you be more handsome in person? Uh, oh. Iron Man! Hey, what are you doing robbing a bank? You're a billionaire. Uh, hey! Uh, this feels so weird! Uh, 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 what is that thing? I'm starting to think you're not the Avengers! Uh, that that was great, and that was all playing on the new Apple TV 4K. Now, at the heart of the Apple TV, we've got the powerful A10X Fusion chip. This is the same chip that's in our iPad Pro. And the new Apple TV isn't just slightly faster, it's remarkably faster. 
CPU performance is more than twice as fast as the current Apple TV, and graphics are more than four times faster. And of course, it runs the latest version of tvOS, the best operating system for the living room. Now, to experience 4K with HDR, you also need great content. And we've been working with the large Hollywood studios to bring all of their 4K and HDR movie titles to iTunes. So now you'll have the biggest releases in the best picture quality, all on iTunes, all available for the same price as HD. And if you've bought one of those movies in HD from iTunes, we're going to automatically upgrade them to 4K HDR at no additional charge. Now, in addition to iTunes, we've been working with leading streaming providers like Netflix to bring their 4K HDR titles to Apple TV. And later this year, Amazon Prime Video with all of their 4K HDR titles and originals as well. Now, last year, we introduced the Apple TV app, an easy way to watch your favorite movies and TV shows in a single place. It's been available in the US, and today I'm happy to announce that we're bringing it to seven additional countries. Canada and Australia later this month, and the rest by the end of the year. Now, for each country, it's really important that we have the content that those customers know and love, and that's why we're adding all of these local services to Apple TV. Now, later this year, Apple TV will do even more, because we're bringing live sports, so you'll never miss a game. If you're a huge sports fan like I am, you're really going to love this feature. If your favorite team is playing on ESPN, it'll automatically appear right first in the up next list. You'll even get notifications when a game's about to start or if there's a close game so you can start watching instantly. And if you scroll up, you'll see even more games. And in addition, we're bringing live news to the TV app. Now, let's take a look at those games. As you can see, we show you the score and the time remaining to help you decide which game to watch. And if you're one of these people that doesn't like to know the score, you can turn the feature off. Now, we also have a dedicated sports tab where you can see every live and upcoming game. And as the seasons change, so will the sports tab, always showing what's you what's best for you. As sports in the TV app is a real game changer for sports fans. And of course, the new TV app is available on your iPhone and iPad as well. Now, if you own an iPad or iPhone, there's no better choice than Apple TV. You can now share your photos on the big screen, including live photo effects, 4K video memories. You can play from the over 40 million songs in Apple Music, including the music that your friends are listening to. And because Apple TV is always home, you get anywhere, anytime access to all of your HomeKit accessories. And of course, you got access to choose from the thousands of games and apps on the App Store. And with the A10X Fusion ship, there's so much more that Apple TV can do. And to see what's possible, we'd love to show you a new game from that game company. They're known for making artistic and critically acclaimed games. As a matter of fact, their first game called Flower was chosen as the first video game ever to be in the permanent collection in the Smithsonian, which is very, very cool. So with that, I would love to welcome their CEO, Genova Chen. Thanks, Eddie. At That Game Company, uh, we treat games as an art form. Today, many of us play games alone, but we believe games is a medium that can bring people together. And that's exactly what we are going to do with our new game, Sky. Together with me is my colleague, Mike, and Mike, why don't we take off? Sky is a romantic social adventure game where you fly above the clouds to explore the wonders of a mysterious world. The game is designed to be adaptable to the most casual players. The control is simple and intuitive. Everything can be done with one finger on the Siri remote. Oh, hey, that's uh, Mike's friend, Jeff and he's asking us to follow him. Let's see what he has discovered. Compassion and generosity are key to unveil hidden areas of the world 
as well as growing your character. So by lighting all the candles, Jeff and Mike was able to summon the spirit. And he's about to teach Mike the knowledge of how to summon a magical creature. In Sky, we really take advantage of the powerful new hardware. With Metal 2 and Apple TV's 810X Fusion chip, we are able to run the game smoothly even with these detailed clouds, intelligent creatures, and up to eight players from anywhere around the world. And let's see if we can uh, draft off one of these creatures. We don't have time to show you everything, so we're gonna skip forward to the dark temple ahead. Light and dark are important themes of the game. In Sky, you play as the children of light, and your goal is to bring that light to where it is needed the most. With the light, Mike was able to free all the butterflies, and together they can move on to the next part of the adventure. With a live orchestral soundtrack and a cinematic experiences, you can expect to be immersed in an ever-expanding world. So, join hands with your loved ones and play Sky exclusively on Apple TV, iPad, and iPhone this winter. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. We can't wait for you to get your hands on Sky. We're so excited about the new Apple TV 4K. It's got powerful hardware that delivers stunning 4K HDR video. Live sports, along with live news, TV shows, and, and, uh, and movies, all in the TV app. And the perfect big screen companion for your iPhone or iPad. The new Apple TV 4K starts at $179. It joins the existing one. You can order it starting on September 15th, and it ships just a week later. That is the new Apple TV 4K. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Eddie. I can't wait for you to experience the beauty and the magic of the cinema right in your living room with the Apple TV 4K. Now, next up, iPhone. <laughs> Apple has always believed that technology infused with humanity could improve people's lives and change the world. No other device in our lifetimes have had the impact on the world that the iPhone has. Nothing else has become so essential or put so much power into so many people's hands than iPhone. It's truly amazing how much iPhone impacts the world each and every day. Our intention with the iPhone has always been able to, been to create something so powerful, so immersive, and so magical that the hardware virtually disappears. Over the last 10 years, we've reimagined or invented numerous technologies to create just that experience. The first iPhone forever changed how we interact with technology by introducing multi-touch. For the first time, you were actually touching the software instead of buttons. It was magical. The App Store changed the way we work, play, learn, communicate, spawning new companies and new industries along the way. We took the viewing experience to places literally never seen before with technologies like the Retina display. We changed the way people communicate with features like iMessage and FaceTime that allowed us all to connect in more meaningful ways. And with Siri, we used artificial intelligence to make our voices more powerful. 
iPhone even revolutionized security and privacy with Touch ID and our wallets with Apple Pay. And of course, iPhone put amazing, easy to use cameras into our hands, becoming the most popular way to capture the images of our lives. Over the past decade, we've pushed forward with innovation after innovation after innovation, bringing us to this moment, when now we can create devices that are far more intelligent, far more capable, far more personal than ever before. We have huge iPhone news for you today, and it gets started right now. iPhone 8, iPhone 8, this is a huge step forward for iPhone. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil to the stage. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone. I am so excited to tell you all about the new iPhone 8 and the new iPhone 8 Plus. These are a new generation of iPhone and they improve on everything we love about iPhone. The design is all new. It has glass in both the front and the back. The aluminum band beautifully matches the finish of each iPhone 8. It comes in silver, space gray, and a beautiful new gold finish. It's made from an aerospace grade 7000 series custom aluminum alloy. The glass has a seven layer color process, making sure there's a beautiful, precise hue. And the glass is further reinforced by an internal laser welded steel and copper structure. And we're so excited because this glass is the most durable ever in a smartphone. <laughs> iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is also microscopically sealed for water and dust resistance. And they have a new Retina HD display in each model. There's a 4.7 inch Retina display in iPhone 8 and a 5.5 inch in iPhone 8 Plus. Now Apple Retina displays are renowned for their incredible color accuracy. And they have great wide cinema quality color gamut. We've built in our 3D touch technology into the display. And for the first time in an iPhone display, it is our True Tone technology. Now with True Tone, it adapts the color, temperature, and intensity to the ambient light around us. Along with the displays, iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have new stereo speakers as well. They're 25% louder than the speakers in iPhone 7, and they have a deeper bass, too. And this is pretty incredible. Inside iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is a brand new chip, and this is a breakthrough in performance in a mobile device. We call it a11 Bionic. This is the most powerful and smartest chip ever in a smartphone. It's a 64 bit design, 4.3 billion transistors, six core. We're going to geek out here for a bit because it is so awesome. It has two high performance cores. They're 25% faster than the high performance cores in the previous industry leading A10 chip. There's four high efficiency cores. They're up to 70% faster than the ones in the A10 chip. They're managed by our second generation performance controller that now can use all six cores at once and can deliver up to 70% improvement in multi-threaded workloads. And they have our first ever Apple de design graphics processing unit or GPU. This is a three core design. It's 30% faster than the graphics in the previous A10. The GPU is designed to accelerate 3D apps and games, especially those that use our new Metal 2 framework. 
and the GPU also is incredible for machine learning apps. And those kind of tasks get a big speed up if they use our, our core machine learning framework too. There's more to it. The A11 Bionic includes a first, a new generation image signal processor, or ISP. So you know this is used in photography. It delivers faster autofocus in low light. It has new pixel processing for sharpness and texture. And for the first time, to help reduce noise, it has hardware-enabled multi-band noise reduction. All of this helps to improve performance and helps us take better pictures. Perhaps the most beloved feature of every new generation of iPhone is the cameras. And people love taking photos. And customers send us their photos for our shot on iPhone campaign, like this one. This was sent from Jeremy Perez Cruz. He shot it with an iPhone 7 Plus. And people are going to love taking pictures with the iPhone 8 camera. It has an all new 12 megapixel sensor. It's larger and faster. It provides 83% more light and it provides more, it's more power efficient at the same time. It has deeper pixels and a new color filter. So this adds up to having better color saturation, a wider dynamic range of color, and lower noise in your photos and videos. iPhone 8 Plus has two new sensors in its dual camera. The wide angle camera has an f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization. The telephoto camera has f2.8 aperture. Though as always, we want to show you the kind of photos you can take off of our new cameras. Now these are photos we're going to show that have not been retouched in any way. They're straight off the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. So here's the first one. This is absolutely beautiful. Now that's not the Golden Gate Bridge. This is taken in Portugal. It shows the beauty of wide color gamut. It has great dynamic range, sharpness, and incredibly low noise. Just look at that blue sky. Here's another example. It shows incredible wide quality color again. And just look at the skin tones and the detail in the hair and the eyes. If you look closely in her eyes, you can actually see the photographer reflected there holding an iPhone to take the picture. Here's a great example of the amazing textures and depth in photography. You can really feel the fabric, and you can see details in her face behind the fabric. Here's a great example of low light photography. Texture, detail, and, and very subtle colors in this darker environment. Last year, we introduced portrait mode. iPhone 8 takes fantastic portrait modes. And people flip over taking these photos, and now with the iPhone 8 Plus, you're gonna get sharper details, more uses in low light, and even a more natural bokeh in the background of the photo. So this is a big hit. We had a, a surprise new feature last year, portrait mode. We brought it out in beta, and it just got better and better over time, and, and customers send us photos. They love this. So we challenged the engineering team to do that again, to make it easy for all of us to take advantage of an advanced photographic technique, and they're doing it. And it has to do with lighting. And if you've ever had a prof professional portrait taken, you know that pro photographers use advanced equipment and have a great understanding of advanced techniques to literally sculpt the light on your face to create the perfect mood for a portrait photograph. Well, our team is making this possible for all of us. Using the new dual cameras and the A11 Bionic chip and the iPhone 8 Plus, the team has come up with a new feature called portrait lighting. Now, this is beta, but it will ship with the iPhone 8 Plus. And here's how it works. When you compose a photo in the camera app using the portrait mode, the dual cameras in the ISP sense the scene. They create a depth map, they separate the subject from the background, and then using machine learning, it creates facial landmarks and actually changes the lighting of the contours over your face. And that happens while you're composing the shot. It's super easy to use. Right when you're in the camera app, you use portrait mode, and there's a new menu to select the lighting effect you want to use. You just swipe to pick a different effect for whatever you want to shoot. Now, these aren't filters. This is real-time analysis of the light on your subject's face. In fact, you can go in later, after you shot a portrait mode photo, into the Photos app and change the lighting effect to select which one you want to use on your photograph. And the team has done an unbelievable job on this. And so here's an example of a photo that's taken, not touched in any way. This is portrait mode using portrait lighting. And it's actually using the setting in portrait lighting for stage light 
So it drops away the background to make this stunning, dramatic photograph. It's absolutely beautiful. So iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are incredible for taking pictures. They're also amazing for video as well. In fact, iPhone 8 has the highest quality video capture ever in a smartphone. <laughs> Along with the ISP, we have an Apple-designed video encoder. This enables faster frame rates and higher quality video. It does real-time image and motion analysis to predict changes in the content and optimize the video encoding algorithms. So while you're shooting video, let's say 4K, 60 frames a second, the iPhone 8 divides each frame into individual tiles, two million of them. And we analyze the two million tiles every second, looking for details like texture and edges to predict whether that tile has grass, sky, water, or movement in it. So let's say you're shooting 4K 60 frame of video, it can look like this. It's beautifully optimized for quality and for compression level. I mean, this video was shot on an iPhone in 4K. It's amazing. And if you're one of the many people who love shooting slow-mo videos, that's gotten a lot better too. Now you can shoot at 1080p HD 240 frames a second. That's double the frame rate of previous. Absolutely beautiful. So now, iPhone 8 is incredible for shooting photos. It's incredible for video. There's a third category of use of the camera that's going to become increasingly important in our mobile devices, and that's augmented reality. This is an incredible area for us to advance in, and our teams have worked together, hardware and software, to make iPhone 8 the first camera, the first iPhone really created for augmented reality, and the first smartphone designed for it as well. We custom tune each iPhone for augmented reality. The cameras are actually individually calibrated in the factory, and that makes a huge difference in the performance for AR. There are new gyroscopes, new accelerometers, and AR kit software is tightly tuned to all this hardware to deliver the best experience for motion tracking. And AR greatly benefits from the new A11 Bionic chip. The CPU handles world tracking. The new Apple GPU renders immersive graphics at up to 60 frames a second. The new ISP does real-time lighting estimation. And this stuff is amazing that it happens on a device in the palm of our hands. So I want to show you some of the work that developers are starting to do with AR apps on iPhone 8. So here's one example. It's a game, Warhammer 40K Freeblade from Pixel Toys. You can now use their photo mode to bring the Freeblade night into the real world and play it right where your friends are standing around you. <laughs> Here's another from Major League Baseball's advanced media team. They're enhancing the at-bat app with AR kit so that when you're at the game, you can hold up your iPhone and see real-time player information and stats on top of the game you're watching. And here's Sky Guy from Fifth Star Labs. You can use AR kit with this app to actually superimpose the map on top of the sky as you're looking at it around you. This isn't some generic sky. This is the sky around you. <laughs> so now we want to show you an exciting AR app right here live on stage playing on an iPhone 8. It's from Directive Games. This is a new startup based in Shanghai. It's founded by developers who have worked on some of the biggest franchises in gaming. So please welcome Atlee Marr, CEO and co-founder of Directive Games. Atlee? Thanks, Will. Earlier this summer, with the introduction of ARKit, Apple changed gaming forever. What we're about to show you is one of the world's first competitive multiplayer games designed to be played entirely in augmented reality. This is The Machines. In the game, Players battle their friends in real time, either online or around the table in the same room. My friend and co-founder Andrea is preparing a match for us where we play the rebels against the dominators. What's really cool is with ARKit and Metal 2 on the new iPhone, we are able to experience games in an entirely new way. Since players are able to view the game from any angle, our content has to be incredibly detailed. With the power of the new iPhone and Unreal support for Metal 2, 
we are able to render the entire level on screen, an amazing 1.2 million polygons, while also allowing you to move in close to really appreciate the high visual fidelity. And just look at those 4K textures, it's gorgeous. Now, shall we go into the game? AR allows us to use our position in the real world to gain a tactical advantage. Just look how Andrea is moving towards this cave, lining up his targets. This is something that would have been hard to do with Pinch and Zoom. It's like you're not just controlling the game, you're in the game. Right? Another awesome addition to the experience is spatial audio. If you go close to the action, the sound increases. And if a solid object gets between you and the action, the sound is occluded perfectly. And with the stereo speakers on the new iPhone, this is truly amazing. It looks like we're getting hit pretty hard. Yes, deploy a shield, protect our heroes. Now let's rain fire on our enemies, move closer to their base, and get ready for the fatal blow with our Subu weapon. Oh, the drop tube is there. Can you take it out at the same time? What you just saw is an amazing evolution in how games are played and experienced thanks to the combination of ARKit and Metal 2 on the brand new iPhone. We can't wait for you to play it. Look for the machines on the App Store this month exclusively on iOS. Thank you. Thank you, Atlee. Now, let's talk about wireless. We once said that the future is wireless. And boy, were we right. And that's becoming more true than ever before with iPhone 8. It supports LTE Advanced for fast networking connections, Bluetooth 5.0 for the latest accessories. Of course, it supports our great beloved AirPods and the Beats X headphones that use our W1 chip, and the new Beats Studio 3s as well. And now with iPhone 8, with its glass back, we're enabling the freedom of wireless charging. I mean, this is a simple thing. We do this every day. We use our phones in the day and we charge them at night, often on a charger by our bed stand in our homes or in our hotels. And words can't describe just how much nicer it is to just put it down and pick it up whenever you want to charge without ever having to plug in a cable again. You're gonna want to do this by your bedside, you're going to want to do this in a cafe or restaurant as they start to support wireless charging. You want to do it in an airport so you can top up your charge before you get on the next flight. And perhaps the best use case of all, in your car. You can get into your car, wirelessly connect and start using CarPlay, put your iPhone on the center console and it's charging all without ever having to plug in a cable again. What makes this possible is we're building into iPhone 8 and 8 Plus wireless charging with Qi. Now, Qi is the leading openness wireless charging standard. And we hope to help Qi by increasing adoption of it and creating new use cases for it. Many restaurants, shops, airports, cars have started to build in support for Qi wireless charging and they'll work with iPhone 8. Many companies are offering Qi chargers and those that are Qi certified should all work with iPhone 8. And we've worked with some developers who are creating cheat chargers, and we're going to offer them in our stores and online for our iPhone 8 customers, like this one from Mophie and this one from Belkin. So that's iPhone 8. It's a new generation of iPhone. It improves on everything we love about iPhone. It is packed with innovative technologies from the glass and aluminum design to the Retina HD displays, the new A11 Bionic chip, it's, they're designed for AR apps like no phone has been before. They have new single and dual cameras that support for the brand new photo lighting effects in portrait mode and wireless charging. Now iPhone 7 came in these three configurations starting at 32 gigabytes. 
but we're really happy to tell you iPhone 8 is gonna start with twice the capacity at 64 gigabytes and have a second one at 256 gigabytes. And the price will be $699. iPhone 8 Plus will have the same two configurations, 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes, and it will be priced starting at $799. We'll be able to pre-order them starting this Friday on September 15th, and they'll be available a week later on September 22nd. And we can all upgrade to iOS 11 starting on September 19th. So that is iPhone 8. I'd like to turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Tim. iPhone 8, a new generation of iPhone, and a huge step forward. But we're not stopping there. We do have one more thing. Now, we have great respect for these words, and we don't use them lightly. Our teams have been hard at work for years on something that is important to all of us, the future of the smartphone. The first iPhone revolutionized a decade of technology and changed the world in the process. Now, 10 years later, it is only fitting that we are here in this place on this day to reveal a product that will set the path for technology for the next decade. This is iPhone 10. It is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil back up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. I think you can imagine there are a lot of people at Apple that didn't get much sleep last night preparing for this. Is this, this is so exciting. I mean, it is all screen. It is beautiful to look at. It is incredible to hold. The display fits edge to edge, top to bottom. It goes into each corner where it follows the tight curve of the design. It has glass on both the front and the back, using the same super strong formula as iPhone 8. The band is made from a surgical grade stainless steel that's both durable and polishes to a beautiful finish. And look how the glass and the stainless steel fit, form a continuous surface from front to back. There has never been anything like it. It's engineered to be water and dust resistant at a microscopic level. It comes in two beautiful finishes, space gray and silver. Each has an incredible depth and a pearlescence to the color in the glass. iPhone 10 has an all new display. It's called the Super Retina Display. The level of quality and responsiveness and efficiency is really quite a breakthrough in mobile displays. To start with, the Super Retina display is 5.8 inches on the diagonal. It's got 2436 by 1125 resolution. That's over 2.7 million pixels. It has 458 pixels per inch. Now, this is the highest resolution and pixel density ever in an iPhone. I mean, it's remarkable how this larger display can be packed into a phone that fits so comfortably in our hands. 
The Super Retina display uses OLED technology. This is the first OLED display great enough to be in an iPhone. Traditional OLED displays have had great benefits, like high contrast and resolution, and no backlight means you can make them thinner. But they came with trade-offs in brightness and rich colors and color accuracy, at least compared to our retina displays. But the Super Retina display overcomes all of these deficiencies and lives up to all that we expect from an iPhone display. In addition, the new Super Retina display supports HDR in both the Dolby Vision and HDR10 formats. It has an incredible a million to one contrast ratio. It has the best color accuracy. It integrates our unique 3D touch technology right into the display. And like iPhone 8, it includes True Tone. Now, all this innovative Super Retina display technology is great, but it's the point of it that matters. And the point of it is to enable an entirely new experience that's more fluid, more intuitive. So let's start with the simplest thing. How do you wake up your iPhone 10? Well, certainly you can raise to wake just like before, but now you can also just tap on the screen and it wakes up. Now with the display going edge to edge and top to bot bot bottom, there's no more home button. And this is an important part and a big step forward in the iPhone user experience. Something we use hundreds of times a day for so many tasks is an opportunity to rethink how iPhone should work and how we can make it better. So now, when you want to go to the home screen, you simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's incredibly smooth. And once you do it for the first time, you'll know there's never been a better way. And it works the same way across the system. If you're running an app like Mail and you want to go home, what do you do? You simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that easy and that intuitive and so much nicer. Now the same fluid gesture also works for multitasking. So if you're in an app and you want to multitask, you just swipe up from the bottom, you pause for a split second and you're in multitasking. And then you can tap on any app and jump right to it. We also use the home button for Siri. So how are we going to do that now? Well, of course, you can just speak to your phone as before and say, hey, Siri. No, I didn't shut anyone's phones off. <laughs> or you can now press the side button in, which has been made larger. And once you press it in, you can just talk to Siri. I know what you're thinking about. Well, what about unlocking? How do you unlock your phone with iPhone 10? I mean, this has been a very important part of the iPhone user experience from the very beginning. The first iPhone, we led the way with multi-touch, and we created slide to unlock. And this protected the iPhone from turning on when you didn't want it to, like in your pocket. Starting with iPhone 5S, we invented Touch ID. We made it fast and easy to protect all your data and unlock your phone with just your fingerprint. And Touch ID became the gold standard in consumer device biometric protection. But we know we can do something that's better. With iPhone 10, your iPhone is locked until you look at it and it recognizes you. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural, and effortless. We call this Face ID. So Face ID is the future of how we will unlock our smartphones and protect our sensitive information. To make Face ID possible took some of the most advanced technology we have ever created. And much of it is packed right up here into this tiny little area at the top of the display. We call this the True Depth Camera System. And it is made up of incredible state-of-the-art technology. There's an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, the front side camera, and a dot projector. And that's not all. There's also the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, the speaker and microphone, all packed into this true depth camera system area. It is amazing. And here's how it works. Every time you glance at your iPhone 10, it detects your face with the flood illuminator, even in the dark. The IR camera takes an IR image. The dot projector projects out over 30,000 invisible IR dots. We use the IR image and the dot pattern and we push them through 
neural networks to create a mathematical model of your face. And then we check that mathematical model against the one that we've stored that you set up earlier to see if it's a match and unlock your phone. And this all happens in real time. It all happens invisibly. You don't see these things going off. It's incredible. It just all works and all happens. To create Face ID, we worked with thousands of people around the world, and the team took over a billion images. And with that, they developed multiple neural networks to create Face ID. And to process the machine learning in Face ID's neural networks, we built Apple's first ever neural engine. Yeah, this is a big deal. In our pockets, in our phones, is an A11 bionic chip with a built-in neural engine to process face recognition. <laughs> now, the neural engine is specialized hardware built for a specific set of machine learning algorithms. This is another example of the incredible collaboration between the hardware and software teams that's only possible at Apple. The neural engine is a state-of-the-art ultra-fast processing system. It uses our highest density computing ever. It's a dual-core design. It can perform over 600 billion operations per second, and it's used to the real-time processing of face ID recognition. But for all of us, it's just super easy and fun to use. When you set up Face ID, you just follow the on-screen instructions, and it tells you how to move your head around in the camera so Face ID can recognize your face. And that's it. You do that once when you set it up. And Face ID learns your face. Even if you change your hairstyle, you decide to put on glasses, you're wearing a hat, or you do it up any way you do it, Face ID learns your face. It learns who you are. And it adapts to you as your face changes over time. Let's say you start to grow a beard. It works in day. It works at night. Now, the teams worked hard to make sure the face ID can easily be spoofed by things like photographs. They've even gone and worked with professional mask makers and makeup artists in Hollywood to protect against these attempts to beat face ID. These are actual masks used by the engineering team to train the neural networks to protect against them in face ID. It's incredible. The teams worked hard to protect your face data. Yes. Your face data is protected with the secure enclave and the A11 Bionic chip. All the processing is done on iPhone 10 and not sent to a server. We require user attention to unlock. That means if your eyes are closed, you're looking away, it's not going to unlock. Now, how do we compare that to Touch ID? How secure is it? Well, there's no perfect system, not even biometric ones. But as we said earlier, Touch ID is the gold standard for consumer device biometric protection. And the data for Touch ID has been 1 in 50,000, meaning that the chance that a random person could use their fingerprint to unlock your iPhone has been about 1 in 50,000, and it's been great. So what are the similar statistics for Face ID? 1 in a million. <laughs> the chance that a random person in the population could look at your iPhone 10 and unlock it with their face is about one in a million. Now, of course, the statistics are lower if that person shares a close genetic relationship with you. So for example, if you happen to have an evil twin, <laughs> you really need to protect your passcode with your sensitive data with a passcode. Hopefully you don't. Face ID also works with Apple Pay. So to pay for things, you just double tap the button on the side you look at iPhone 10 to authenticate and hold it near the payment terminal to pay. It's that easy, fast, intuitive, simple. Face ID also works with third-party apps. Third-party apps already support Touch ID and they'll work with Face ID. So apps like Mint, 1Password, E-Trade will all work with Face ID. So Face ID, it's face, uh, face authentication for unlocking your iPhone and protecting your sensitive data. It uses the innovative TrueDepth camera system. It's trained with neural networks. It's easy to set up. It learns your face, and it adapts to your face over time. It's aware of your attention. It works with Apple Pay, and it works with third-party apps. 
this true depth camera system is incredible technology and it's gonna enable so many great new user experiences. The first one, of course, is Face ID. But the team decided to create another great experience with it as well. This is a fun one. It has to do with emojis. Now we use emojis to communicate with others and to express emotion, but of course you can't customize emojis. They only have a limited amount of expressiveness to them. So our team created something called an emoji. These are animated emojis. These are emojis that you control with your face. In emojis track more than 50 facial muscle movements. They've been meticulously animated to create amazing expressiveness. You can just watch this, can't you? <laughs> the way you create and share an emoji are right from within Apple Messages. You said a little late. Where are you? You can pick from a dozen different animated emojis to share and express whatever you want to express to your family and friends. So iPhone 10 is packed with innovative technologies that enable new user experiences. I'm really excited to invite out Craig Federici to show you iPhone 10 and what it's like to use it for the very first time. Craig? Hey. Hey, everybody. Wow, well, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to give all of you your first live look at iPhone X. Uh, this is a phone we've been dreaming about for a long time, but the reality of it in your hand, it's, uh, it's really something epic. So let's take a look. Here is iPhone X. Now, unlocking it is as easy as looking at it and swiping up, and you know, Let's try that again. Oh, ho, ho. let's uh, go to back up here and get right in. So here we are, and you see this expansive display. It's just a beautiful canvas for all of your content and your gestures. And I'm just going to go into the weather app here, and you can just see how apps look when they take advantage of the edge-to-edge -edge display. Now, exiting an app couldn't be easier. You just swipe from the bottom, just like this, and throw the app right back on the home screen. Let me do that again. Swipe right up. Let's take a look at the web. It just looks unbelievable, edge to edge, on this display. And your photos, of course, are just gorgeous as well. Let's jump into this one. Just amazing. Now, video, of course, is unbelievable on the Super Retina display. It looks great in portrait and in landscape. And of course, this is HDR video. Just incredible looking. Now, Phil told you a little bit about multitasking on the device. Let me show you. I'm just going to jump into Maps. And if I want to move between my applications, I can just swipe up and stop. My other apps all come in. I can get at them with a tap. Just lift. It's just that easy. And we have a great shortcut as well. You can actually move back between apps just by swiping along the bottom like this. It's really easy. Now, you may be wondering about Control Center. And worry not, right where your status indicators are in the upper right-hand corner, you can just swipe down and get at Control Center from anywhere. It's that easy. Now let's take a look again at Face ID, because unlocking your phone is just amazingly intuitive. You just raise it, look at it, and swipe right up to get started. <laughs> but now, it's also incredibly fast, so I'm just going to do that again. I just raise it, look at it, swipe. I don't have to wait. And it's also really, really smart. So let's say I wake my phone, and I'm not looking at it stays locked, but once I, give it my, once I give it my attention, well, it unlocks and I can get right in. It's really cool. Now, Face ID is also great for Apple Pay. So if I'm at the register, I can just double click on the side button, I'm authenticated, and I can get in just like that. Now, the true depth camera behind Face ID isn't just about authentication. In fact, 
We've extended AR kit with some incredible new face tracking capabilities that provide a whole new class of augmented reality experiences. Now, we've been working on one with Snapchat, and I'd like to show it to you now. So I'm gonna launch in. You see it builds a mesh in my face, and now I can just select a mask. The tracking is just unreal. Let's check out this one. Now look at the detail over the eyes, the incredible metallic reflections, the quality of the tracking, it's, it's just stunning. Now, of course, many of us like to communicate with emoji. And with an emoji, we can now breathe our own personality into our favorites. It's available as an app right inside of Messages. So I can just go right in here, and it immediately starts tracking me. So I can make whatever expression I want, like, and just pick that up and use it as a sticker, drop it on my message like that. We also let you manipulate these in full screen. You can audition your favorites, and there's some really great ones, like the kitty cat, so expressive and ferocious. It's a happy puppy. Check out the physics in the ears. The pig. <laughs> We've got a chicken. And the unicorn, mythical creature, favorite of the startup. And yes. If you were by chance wondering what humanity would do when given access to the most advanced facial tracking technology available, you now have your answer. <laughs> now, these can be so much fun, you're gonna wanna share them. And fortunately, we let you record messages. I'm gonna record a message here for Tim. Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the fox for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the fox for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Now, you can send it with ju just a tap, and it appears as a looping video right inside the transcript. If we're really lucky for our grand finale, we might just get a response back from Tim. <laughs> oh, here it is. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Take me to your leader. Wait a minute, Craig. I am your leader. Let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> so that is your first look at the new iPhone 10 and the amazing experience with the True Depth camera and Animoji. I think you're going to love it. Thank you very much. So thank you, Craig. Now let's talk about the amazing cameras in iPhone 10. iPhone 10 has dual 12, 12 megapixel sensors with dual cameras, both a faster sensors, wider sensors, just like in iPhone 8. It has new color filters, new deeper pixels. There's an f1.8 aperture on the wide angle camera and a faster f2.4 aperture on the telephoto. So that lets in 36% more light to the telephoto camera. But the big news on the camera in the iPhone 10 is it has dual optical image stabilization. That means there's OIS on both the wide angle and the telephoto lens. That's a lot of magnets moving around in a very small space, but it helps with compensating for handshake and to take better photos and videos in low light. There's also a better quad LED two-tone flash that is twice the uniformity of light on our subjects. So let's look at some photos taken from the backside camera on iPhone 10. This is absolutely beautiful. Great dynamic range, detail, low noise. This is a beautiful photo. The textures are simply stunning. Now there's zero shutter lag and it helps to freeze motion so we can get a photo like this. And look at that blue sky with low noise. It's absolutely to die for. The OIS delivers low light performance so now you can get incredible low light images like this with a telephoto camera as well as the wide angle. And iPhone 10 is fantastic for the portrait mode feature that we all love. In iPhone 10, you can get great portrait modes, especially in lower light. And iPhone 10 supports the brand new portrait lighting feature as well. 
that's a, again a photo taken right off of iPhone 10, not retouched in any way, with a stage lighting effect dropping out the background. <laughs> iPhone 10 is great for photos, it's amazing for 4K video, and like iPhone 8, it's tuned for AR applications. There's factory calibrated cameras, the new gyroscope, an accelerometer. The performance advantages of the A11 Bionic chip CPU, GPU, and ISP, and AR kit is tuned for iPhone 10. Now the backside camera that we use so much is not the only camera, of course, on the iPhone. We have our front side camera as well, and people love to use those for taking selfie photographs. And now with iPhone 10 and its true depth camera, it really delivers a breakthrough in the photos you can take for selfies. Because now with selfies, you can take portrait mode photos as well. And it also supports portrait lighting all through the front side true depth camera. I mean, people are going to be blown away with the selfies you can take with the iPhone 10. This is absolutely beautiful. And of course, everything we've seen is powered in iPhone 10 by the amazing new A11 Bionic chip. We talked all about an iPhone 8, but it's worth hitting on the highlights again because there has never been anything like it. A 64-bit, six-core design, 4.3 billion transistors, two high-performance cores, four high-efficiency cores, our new second-generation performance controller that uses all six cores at once, our first Apple design graphics processing unit, the brand new ISP that improves autofocus, the video encoder that does real-time motion analysis while you're shooting video, the neural engine, and of course, the secure enclave to protect our Face ID data. All this performance, I'm sure as you expect, does come with a hit to battery life. So I think it's important to tell you that we've increased it. <laughs> yes, it lasts. Yes. Again, hardware and software teams work really hard to deliver two more hours of all day battery life to us. So, wireless, just like iPhone 8, iPhone 10 is also built for a wireless world. It has Qi charging through the glass back and it will work with the Qi charging devices like the ones that we mentioned earlier from Mophie and Belkin. It also work with third party Qi devices that are Qi certified. And there are a lot of great devices that are gonna start to come to market, particularly because of iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. But we also think we can make the wireless charging experience even better. So our team wants to create something I think all of us are gonna to wanna to use and it might actually help move the entire industry forward. So we're gonna give you a sneak peek of this idea right now. I'm sure many of you do this, I do this. I have a lot of Apple products, I love them, I use them all day long, I charge them at night. You plug in your cables, you plug in your chargers, you take those cables and chargers with you on the road when you travel. We think we have an idea of how to make this a better experience. And here it is. It's a mat that you place your iPhone 8 or iPhone 10 down and it just starts to charge. And there's a beautiful new interface. It doesn't stop there. You can place your Series 3 Apple Watch down on it and it starts to charge as well. And you can place your AirPods with the optional new wireless charging case on it and it starts to charge as well. They all charge. This system has a great interface. They intelligently work together and communicate with each other to manage the charging through one more efficient charging system. This is not possible with current standards, but our team knows how to do this. We call it air power. We hope people love it, that it encourages others to create more advanced solutions based on technology like this. We're gonna be working with the Qi standards team to incorporate these benefits into the future of the standards to make wireless charging better for everyone. So look for the AirPower charger next year. So that is iPhone 10. It is the future of the smartphone. It is packed with many innovative features, <laughs> huge list, we won't go through them all, and they add up to a new, better experience. We're so excited about iPhone 10, we created a beautiful video to tell you all about it.
For more than a decade, our intention has been to create an iPhone that is all display. A physical object that disappears into the experience. This is iPhone X. Developing the form and display together defines a whole new integration, making the boundary between the device and the screen hard to discern. The custom OLED panel was engineered to fold and seamlessly combine with the external surfaces. Mechanical buttons give way to touch and gestures. There's no home button. A single swipe takes you to the home screen. A more responsive touch system means the gestures in iOS 11 are more fluid. The polished stainless steel band reinforces the water-resistant all-glass design. This new glass formulation, the most durable ever in a smartphone, enables, for the first time, wireless charging. Our new True Depth camera system, contained within this tiny space, uses extraordinary depth sensing technology to let you unlock your phone with a glance. We call this Face ID. It maps the unique geometry of your face with over 30,000 invisible dots. This data is analyzed by the neural engine on the A11 Bionic chip, the first of its kind. Your iPhone now recognizes you, even in the dark, and will adapt to your physical changes. This makes your face your secure password. So with just a look, you can authenticate your phone or use Apple Pay. The True Depth camera also enables new experiences, like bringing emojis to life by mapping more than 50 facial muscles in real time. So you can be happy or sad or cross. Both the front and rear facing cameras now have portrait mode and for the first time you can actually define the light in a scene. Based on fundamental photographic principles, portrait lighting produces the effect of real studio lighting. On the back, the dual camera system is completely redesigned. It's made even smarter by the A11 Bionic chip. With machine learning, the camera detects elements in the scene to optimize the image before the photo is even taken. The camera we use every day now delivers so much more. And as iOS becomes the world's largest platform for augmented reality, it will redefine what's possible. This is iPhone 10. The team works hard to make iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 in the most environmentally friendly manner possible. They have arsenic-free display glass, mercury-free displays. They're BFR-free, PVC-free, beryllium-free. They're now made with a low-carbon process for their aluminum design. And they're highly recyclable with their materials. I'm really proud of that list, so I like to say it every time. iPhone 10 also comes in two configurations, 64 gigs and 256 gigabytes. It'll be priced from $9.99. You can order it starting on October 27th, and it'll begin to ship on November 3rd. So this is the future of the smartphone shipping this year. So this is our lineup for the holidays. Now, every year we say it's a great lineup for the holidays, and it is. But this year is really special. It starts with iPhone SE, iPhone 6S, iPhone 7, the new generation iPhone 8, and the futuristic iPhone 10. Ten years ago, when Steve introduced the world to iPhone, he closed with a quote from Wayne Gretzky. It said, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. Steve said that's what Apple does 
we skate to where the puck is going to be. And that is what iPhone 10 is all about. Thank you. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> iPhone 10, this really is the future. We've made a great, fun new ad that I'd love to show it to you. Every time you call on me, I drop what I do. You are my best friend and we've got some things to do. That is iPhone 10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what a morning we've had. Apple Watch Series 3 with cellular, which gives you the freedom to go anywhere you want with or without your iPhone. Apple TV 4K brings the magic of the cinema straight to your living room with incredible 4K and HDR content. iPhone 8, a beautiful glass design, incredible cameras, wireless charging, A11 bionic chip, and of course, powerful AR capabilities. We think you're going to love it. An iPhone 10, the most advanced iPhone we've ever made. An incredible new design, face ID, true depth camera system, and more powerful technologies than we've ever put in an iPhone before. It really is the future of the smartphone. And we begin this morning with some inspiring words from Steve. One of the ways that I believe people express their appreciation to the rest of humanity is to make something wonderful and put it out there. We work really hard at Apple to create wonderful things. And we hope you love what we've introduced today. I think Steve would be really proud of them. I'd like to thank everyone at Apple who made today possible. Uh, I'd like everybody in Apple to stand up that are here representing their teams from hardware and software and services. Please stand up in operations. Our amazing retail employees. And everyone that works so hard on this theater and on Apple Park. One of the great things about this theater is an unbelievable hands-on area. Uh, it is the most beautiful hands-on area we've ever had by far. And I would encourage all of you to join us there and get your hands on these wonderful products. Thank you so much for spending the morning with us. Thank you. Woo!